Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. Where do you see the economy at this point and where do you see it going? It's going to crash this what? year. This year? Yes. And why do you think it's going to crash? Let's go back to uh, August of 2015. Okay. Markets crashed, Dow fell over a thousand points, everybody's screaming, oh my gosh, Dow's, you know, all these problems. And guess what happened? Market rebounded, correct? Correct. And it ra rebounded, rallied all the way back up into October, November of 2015. And then it crashed again in November, crashed again in December. And then crash again in January. Okay, so we have three crashes in a row so far. Okay, and and in January, remember when the markets are crashing. We made an in January of 2016, all the August lows were taken out across all world markets. Okay, and if they weren't there by February, all the world markets uh, we have made lower lows below August of 2015. Okay, so that's a bearish trend. Okay, so I don't care what the media says what the news says because it's all it's completely irrelevant because the cycle itself is predetermined and it's set into the future already so everything the media says and does is is smoke and mirrors okay but the reality is of what's coming that's not going to change and so when I was on um, future money trends in December I basically said um, you know to Ken on the interview I said watch January all the August lows will break. Go, you know, whoever wants to confirm, go listen to the interview. All the August lows were supposed to break in January across all the world markets. And we nailed the month and what would happen. That's pretty extraordinary. Okay. The point of that being is that when that was happening, I sent out an update to all my subscribers on our stock index and basically saying, this is, we were supposed to be a low and everybody knew the low was the third week of January. And then from that low, we had an up cycle. Well, guess what's happened between the third week of January of 2016 into right now, which is March 3rd. Mm -hmm. What's happened? This market's done what? It's gone up. But that was the cycle. We had an up cycle into today. So when you called up for an interview and you said, hey, let's do an interview. Well, the fact that you picked this day, I was going to suggest it, but you picked this day and it was beautiful because basically it's finished. So everything you're seeing in the market today, it's whatever's being said is irrelevant. But the, the but the cycle finishes; it's over. So just just like just like December was a high, just like uh, when I did an interview with True News on on the twentieth of July, in twenty fifteen, I said it's over. The stock market top today; it's finished. It's going to crash now. Well, look what happened in August: boom, and then December down, and then January down. You know and and right now, this is just a, it's a rebound off every low is a lower low, and then you get a bounce. So this is nothing but a bounce, but it's over. So when you say the market is finished and it's going to crash right now, are you talking like this is the major crash that's coming right now, or we're just going to see it start slipping and sliding lower? Slipping, sliding, then melting. And there's no way the government, the central banks can manipulate the market and push it back up. I mean, in, does your um, um, forecast see anything like that or you just see it completely crashing at this point? The fact that we've called every single turn in the market since July, and go back, check our interviews, every single turn has been called since July. This is a cycle turn right here. So as the market... Sorry. So nothing that everything they've done so far, everything that the central planners, everything that the markets have done and the economists have done 
to the markets have confirmed the trend since the 20th of July. So as the market crashes, what happens to gold? Because we see gold has been around 1200 or so. I mean, we saw a little pop up, but then it was suppressed once again to around the 1200 mark. And it really hasn't moved from that area. Yes, it was down around 1100 and change and moved up to 1200, but it's been staying in that area and there's been a lot of people out there saying that oh gold is going to surge you know to 2000 to 5000 what are you predicting with gold well gold's going to go to big numbers like i've done other interviews like a, if you know everybody is so fixated as a cycle analyst to me i care about time because i do mathematical calculations based on time and at certain time points inflection time points there are highs and lows Okay. Okay. So to me, price is very much less important than the time patterns. Okay. But on those time patterns, you'll get, you'll get critical highs. So we have several, you know, so gold's got a, you know, it's got an up and down pattern for years to come. We did an interview again on the, on the 3rd of December, uh, calling the low to the exact date with Ken at, at future money trends. And that, you know, that video is on our webpage. So we, that we on that day we said today is supposed to be the actual bottom for gold on the December third, and that was at ten thousand, uh, one thousand and forty five dollars. Okay, well look at gold today; it's up like seventeen or something dollars. Last I checked, it's over twelve fifty. So it's you know roughly what is that? You know, it's it's, it's a pretty significant rise from one from a thousand and forty five dollars. The point is, it's an up cycle. Okay, and so now. These are biblical cycles, and so the, the, the cycle started then, and it's like you've got like years now forward. Okay, so it ain't going down, it's going up, and there's going to be inflection points. So if you look at far term, you know, potentially if you want to price, you know, the minimum on gold we're looking at is $5,000, but that's, that's not tomorrow or this year, okay, it's, it's, it's years out. But if, but if these inflection points, these time points are hit sooner, then the, you have to, if like if 5,000 gets hit before the cycle, the long term cycle ends, then potentially you can go to 10,000 or higher, right? So it all the matter of how high the first cycle goes, if that is a good way. But so if you're looking at potentially where could it go, well, minimum 5,000. So you know it's, it's, there's a lot of room to the upside. And on the, and then it could go a lot higher. It depends on how much money is destroyed in the years to come. Because if all the money today isn't destroyed, and derivatives and all that stuff isn't destroyed, right? Well, then you can have e extremely high numbers in terms of price. But on a but as the markets are going to crash and collapse, a lot of the derivatives are going to blow up and basically become worthless. So that would, you know, ultimately reduce the money, some of the money supply. So you're talking about derivatives. You're talking about gold surging to five thousand, and you're saying it's not going to happen this year, gold most likely not going to surge to 5000. Right, right. It, but we're going to have an explosion in price like soon. It's going to be going. It's you know, we've got basically very large projection in, in price patterns gold uh it made, from it made its bottom, it shot up. Um it paused right now when I was in Greg Hunter it, it took out See, they're moving averages. So you have like a 50-day, you know, you're a trader, you know, it's so a 50-day, 100-day, 200-day, 300-day. So you have the moving averages, okay? Well, go look at gold. It's never taken out the six, five or 600-day moving average like in three years on the dailies, okay? And it flew through it like a knife through butter, uh, and it did that on the 11th of February. So do you... And, do you and since then, it's been sitting above it. So now so resistance became support. And so now you've got a pennant formation, and all the, from the pennant formation, you have another measured moved vertical. So back in 2011, we had gold, I mean, it, it topped out at 1900. Right. Do you see gold reaching 1900 this year? Oh, I think it's going to make a new high this year, like soon. Okay. Do, is it's, it... going, it's going to be a price explosion because what you're going to have is a derivative meltdown. Everyone's going to run, to run to the only asset class that people have run to for. 5,000 years. So the one thing that's been money forever is gold. Like I did an interview with another gentleman, you know, last week and I was joking, like, you know, people buried treasure, they, mm -hmm. they buried gold, right? Well, if you found a map today, you go find that gold, guess what? It's still money, okay? But any paper that's in there would be worthless. I guess okay? if you buried the dollar, you know, 50 years or 60 years from now, it wouldn't be worth anything. <laughs> that's the point, right? And so, and so the world is going to always, always, when 
When faith and confidence breaks in the system that you believe to be functioning, when faith and confidence cracks, it doesn't have to be destroyed right away, but it, the moment that faith and confidence is questioned or cracks, right, then people are like, wait a second, right? They start to question. The moment that happens, our world is basically all computerized now. So it's not going to take more than, a, you know, hours to have a price explosion. So if gold is going to go up, what happens to silver? Well, silver, because of the ratio 80 to 1, right, it's on its extreme highs right now. It's like, it's like 83 or something or 82 to 1 just last Friday, okay? But that was a cycle low that we had last week. So we we're looking for a move here. So the ratio is going to get, you know, it's going to go from 80 to, you know, to probably to, to 75 to 70 to 60. And so the ratio is going to narrow. And so the ratio is going to get smaller. So if gold doubles in price, right, silver won't double. It'll go three to four fold. Because they would take silver to maybe forty to one ratio. Okay, so if when gold's at a at, at, at a double price over two thousand dollars, silver would be at least forty five to sixty. Or, you know, it would it would have because that because a threefold increase in silver would take it to say forty five. A fourfold would take it to sixty. Would take it to new all time highs. But silver it would have to narrow the gap, and so it would it would take the ratio of being eighty to one, eventually down to you know fifty to one, forty to one. And so it'll narrow the gap, but it won't get the. I don't believe it'll get the ten to one, which is like the true ratio in ground, for for years to come yet. I could be wrong. We'll, we'll see. But uh, you know, I think that's going to be still years down the road. But silver, ultimately, you know, if it gets ever, you know, it will get back to ten to one minimum at some point. And so if gold's five thousand at ten to one, what does that put silver at? Five hundred dollars. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, do you see any events? like in the news or anything that might, you know, speed this up or slow it down? Do you look at anything like that with what's happening geopolitically or here in the U.S. or to figure out where gold and where silver is going to go? Well, that's the thing, you know, to me, everything I've discovered I do, it's through my computer, but basically looking at chart formations. It's, it's, it's mathematical calculations off of major cycle lows and highs, biblical calculations, and then I take it a step further and I do pattern analysis on charts. And so it's pattern replication. It says, you know, in the Bible, that which has been will be again. There's nothing new under the sun. But that what that means is from a charting standpoint is you can take an, a historic chart from 100 years ago, from 50 years ago, or 10 years ago. And as long as you know where to look, do your, you can, that's calculated through some of the numbers I use. You can overlay the charts. And that's how I can forecast and project what's what's coming. And that's like for the stock market, right? I've done that, and I have the chart. And so my subscribers actually get it. And, you know, these time points we've had, like the last update I did on the stock market cycle, I basically said, here's actually, I gave them the, the chart from January. And I actually drew what it would do from the low of third week in January, and I showed what it would do into March. And it did it perfectly. Okay? And so that was my last update. So the point is, is that these are mathematical calculations and then overlaid with chart patterns and so we have the chart pattern for gold after that low came in and all we know is that we have you know higher high, we have a bull market and that is higher highs and higher lows so each low is going to be higher and each high is going to be higher and that is a bull trend for gold however the big issue with gold here david is they've suppressed the price for 5 years 4 yes. years whatever you want to call it okay so this is not going to be, you know, $10 moves on gold. When it goes, it's going to go. It's going to be a, 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 a historical move to reposition itself, to reprice itself. It has to reposition, it has to get back to where it needs to be because they've suppressed it. It's in a wedge. So when it explodes out of the wedge, it's got to going to go very powerfully to get back to a neutral price. And the neutral price pattern. And what I mean by neutral price pattern is take a, a seven, like a 15 or a chart on gold going back to the year 2001. Okay? Run a. Gold is going to surge this year. Now, is it going to surge in the beginning of this year or the middle of this year or the end of this year? Can you give us that type of time frame? Um, I have it. I can just tell you that the. Surge itself is going to happen anywhere between now and October. 
Okay. Okay. So, so all the world changes are going to happen between our interview here today. Because I, when I was on Greg Hunter, I said that you know you have to have your gold and make sure you've got your you know if you're doing things in the stock market, you want to be you know out of the stock market. But basically, the end of February was a critical time point, and so as of this time point, gold uh, is going is expected to you know have because remember the bottom's in. And, and so as the bottom's in, it's a bull market, and so we're going to have higher highs. Uh, I believe we're going to have explosion quite, you know, relatively soon uh, in terms of price, um, and the price is going to keep escalating higher and higher, um, and, that's, and, then, and that's as the world markets are falling and collapsing. So there, there are going to be inverse cycles, uh, because if you've looked at uh, what the stock market has done relative to gold, they've been inverted since the year 20, uh, thir- 2013. Uh, yeah, 2013. So uh, at that time point, gold dropped, stock market went up. And that's why this time around, you know, people are expecting, oh, gold's going to go down on a stock crash. No, that ain't going to happen. What's going to happen is you're going to have the dollar go down with the stock market, okay? Mm-hmm. And like I said on the, on, the, on the interview with Greg Hunter, see, the problem is if you have a, even a 10% devaluation or a drop on the dollar, okay, if, if people are holding the stocks, when they go back, you know, everything becomes worth less. That percentage, whatever the percentage is, even bonds, if they give you a 1.7 yield, if it drop even a 10% drop, will still give you almost an 8% loss after you go sell your bonds. So a drop in the dollar is going to be very, very significant because that's going to fall with the stock market. And so you're going to have like other currencies, like the euro and other currencies, rise, which is you know people are like, oh, that's not going to happen, but it will because ultimately they're all all the paper assets are going down. It's not like I'm, you know, I think a euro is a good investment. I'm just saying that uh, the euro's had its time to the downside. Now it needs a little bit of reprieve here, um, and the dollar is going to be they're, co- they're counter trends. You know, they're paired, they're they're paired. Um, so as paper assets, uh, you know, from the stock market dollar fall, that's going to cause gold to jump and jump and jump and jump. Um, so it'll be a lot of big moves here. It will not be near the end of the year, even though it's going to keep rallying. The big moves come sooner, and that's kind of what I was trying to get that earlier. Is that you have a five-year wedge? It's an explosion out of the wedge. Okay, so you're going to get a price explosion because of the five-year price suppression. So it's not going to be some easy trade that people are going to go in and say, "Well, I'm going to wait till gold confirms that it's a bull market." It's already confirmed it's a bull market. Okay, but if but if you, it's because it's already making higher highs. It's taken out the 600-day moving average. The 600-day moving average is now support. Okay, so it's taken all the dailies uh, moving averages are all broken. So you have a lot of bullish momentum to the upside. And so if people are waiting for you know confirmation of a bull market, you already got it, okay? And so if you wait too long, when the price explodes, you're going to be paying significantly higher prices for it just because you waited too long. Now, these surges of gold, uh, are we going to see like $100 moves? Yeah. 150 So at that point, people, at that point, people should say, okay, oh, it, gold is on, on the move right now. I better do something. Right, but then what's going to happen is people are going to buy that and they're going to smash it down. So you buy leverage positions, you're going to get, you know, you're not going to have real fun with that. You know, it's like so every time there's a, a price explosion, you know, it's going to be they're going to it's going to jump down again. They're going to it, so it's an explosion, it's a pull down. And it's, you know, so and it's going to be hard to catch it, just like you saw happen on the sixty seventy dollar day that gold jumped sixty or seventy dollars on on the eleventh of February. Right, everybody who bought that spike, look what happened. It went, you know, it's it's. It went sideways for like three weeks, you know, and, and so everybody's now waiting for the drop. And, you know, could it go lower? Maybe. But I still see a lot of movement to, to the upside. And so if you're just not positioned in it, it's going to be a hard, you know, it's, it's going to be difficult because every explosion is going to be followed by immediate, you know, they're going to try to, it's going to go come back down again. Then it's going to explode again. It's going to, so it's just higher, but it's going to be very volatile, I guess what I'm trying to tell you. It's not going to be, you know, some easy trade. So it's going to be like a staircase effect where it's going to continually move up as we go throughout this year. Even though they're trying to flash crash and bring it down, we're going to continually see it move up though. Right. That's basically what a bull market is, but the but the each but you know each move will be potentially bigger and bigger and I and I foresee the first few moves being pretty epic. Yeah. Like epic. You know, they're going to be not just, you know, It'll be you'll have some pretty crazy days, uh, you know, large, large moves, especially when you start seeing, um, you know, the, the market start to melt. Uh, I think you know you're going to see just you know a complete flight to safety, you know, and a flight to safety meaning gold. That's that's money. So as gold that's, that's, is going up, the dollar value is going to decrease. Right. So is this what everyone is talking about? Inflation 
hyperinflation with the dollar? Well, no, because that's first a, that's first the derivative bubble popping and everything basically crashing and gold exploding. Then the money printing starts. So you were saying that the central banks, the Fed, are going to start QE4? <laughs> Yeah, I would don't be surprised. Okay. So how bad uh, you're saying the market's going to crash this year. How bad is the crash going to be for the everyday person? Well, again, see now you're talking events, right? And so when it comes mm -hmm. to events, it's a lot everyone's like, oh, you know, what's it going to look like? And the problem is as a psychoanalyst, I, I can't foresee events like I don't know what, the, what it would look like but all I can say is you know go back and look historically and what was it like historically okay so from a from a cycle perspective this is supposed to be David a biblical cycle that completes now if this ends up being what I think it is this is a completion of a 252 year cycle that basically started the monetary act of 1764 okay so if this goes back that far, this is a completionary cycle to it. Basically, it's supposed to be worse than you know the Great Depression, all those combined, because it's a crack of the of the entire monetary system, and and it's going to be a complete flight to gold and uh, gold and silver as as hard money, and and you're going to see premiums explode, uh, faith and confidence crack. They're going to start to print money. Uh, just to try to prop it up, but the problem is, you know, they've done that already. It didn't work, so no one's going to buy it this time. But everything will get more expensive, obviously, because they're because the because the money supply is going to explode. Everything's just going to explode. Do you? Uh, I mean, are we talking about the market coming down two thousand points? I mean, we're in half. How, no, if I, we compare it to two thousand eight, where we saw this huge crash, and the market was almost in half at that point. And then we saw companies, you know, all of a sudden start laying off thousands of people. Everyone was running for the doors. Uh, are you, in your forecast, you're seeing something worse than that? Well, see, here's the thing is the markets are propped up right now. And even though the cycle's been, for, for, the cycle's been playing out itself, but the problem is, is that there's still a long target to the downside. Okay, so this would be a guess on my part, but don't be surprised that between now and the time point we have in October, that will not be in October or it'll, you know, it'll be sooner rather than later, okay? But there'll be a, you know, again, we have the time points. Uh, I just can't give them out because, you know, a lot of subscribers have them. But the point is, is that on that cycle low to get there, okay, there might be days where the Dow drops three or 4,000 points in a day, okay? okay? And so, you know, so 1,000 points of last August will be a joke compared to what's going to happen here. Okay. So when this happens, what do you predict anything happening with the credit markets or does everything just freeze up at that point? Do banks shut down? I, I don't see again. Question about I I don't have an answer to that because I don't under, you know, those are uh, I can tell you when Mm -hmm. Price price projections, but I can tell you that the events are just there. There's nothing but a guess on my part. But I think you know an analyst like yourself, who basically been in the financial system for a long time, could probably get a pretty good idea of what that would look like. Okay, so we see Russia, we see China, and the central banks since 2008. They're purchasing a lot of gold right now, and we see that China is going to start the yuan-based gold price fix. Now, does this have an effect on what you've been talking about with gold surging? Sure, all of it does. It's uh, you know, it all ties into the cycle. Uh, but you know, other countries have been accumulating gold. Why? Because why do countries accumulate gold? Because they know it's money. Okay, and and so the, the low prices have given them nothing but the ability over the past few years to accumulate more and more gold. Okay, mm -hmm. but at some point, the game's over. And then, and then you have the, you know, the, the the big shift, and it's going to be quick and dramatic because again, I tell it's it's computerized. Okay, everything's black box. It's all computerized. So it will be a quick change of events that's going to happen. And so it's like at the end of the day, like I said, like when the when the dust settles, you're either, you know, you're on this side of the fence, or you're on that side of the fence. But there won't be much time to react. So you need to position yourself before all the events occur. And so my subscribe, you know, it's like, you know, I basically I tell everybody the patterns that I'm seeing 
and then you have day points, right? And so all you do is you position yourself and you wait. And you know, and it's hard. I know it's hard to wait, but um, but you know, the patterns have been playing out beautiful. So it's a matter of you know, if you're going to do something, you need to know when, and then just hold that position until you know uh, until because it'd be too hard to trade it as it's all, you know, coming unglued. So for my last question, from your models, how long will this last? This trend where everything's falling apart and gold is going up how long do you see it lasting years this is not this won't be the recovery that you saw in 2009 where it jumped back up and there and it went back up you know this is a it's a triple top it's pretty easily seen so the best illustration if somebody wanted to see what it looks like take a 20 year monthly chart on london okay okay and what you'll see is a band like this. So take a monthly chart and it's literally a 20, it's a band that goes like this for 20 years. It went up and it went down. It went up, it went down, and it went up. Okay? So 2001, 2003, 2007 or 8, 2009, 2015, and now you have your, so basically the lows around, in, in the, you know, 3,000 on, on the footsie. But it's called a triple top. So you go boom, boom, boom. It's, it's a triple top and then a failure. But after you fail the third time around, it's game over. So it either has to explode on the third and go vertical, and that would be, uh, be true faith and confidence in the system. So the system corrected itself and it went up. But on the other side of it, if it doesn't correct itself, it's a failure. And it, all, all the world markets broke their monthly wedges back in August of, of last year. Um, I, can, if you can, I can show you this right, right here. So here's like... I don't know if you can see this here. But you see all those wedges? This is like the subscriber update. But the point is, what you see is all those wedges, okay? They're all broken. So all the wedges broke in August. And so because all the wedges broke, that's faith and confidence cracking in the chart. And so what you're going to have is just the markets, they're, there's, they're lower, lower highs and eventually just failure. And so all the world markets, you know, that was literally what I showed you was Australia, Toronto, London, Hong Kong, Japan, Switzerland, S&P 500 in Germany, there is no difference. They all have the same wedges broken in August, okay? And so ultimately what you end up having is failure and the, the meltdown. But that's going to be, you know, so the meltdown could be, that's what I'm talking about, those massive, you know, drops because it could hit, you know, the lows back of what we saw on some of the world markets in 2009. Okay, Bo, thank you for being on the X22 Report Spotlight. How can people see your work? Where do they need to go to see this? Um, on my webpage, gold2020forecast.com, um, what I would suggest is there's a few videos that we did, you know, and, and watch the videos. I kind of explain cycles and how our analysis works, but I try to illustrate what we do. Um, and, you know, there's just a lot of interviews that we've also done. We put below there as well, too. But there's some of the, you know, you listen to some of the prior forecasts. Um, and, and really, it's just a matter of getting, getting yourself educated because, you know, it's going to happen. When this happens, it's going to happen quick, uh, and people will be, will be caught flat-footed. And they're going to say, oh, we didn't see it coming. Well, if you listen to our interviews and listen to things that, you know, you've been talking about as well, yes, we saw it coming, but, you know, but no one paid attention. Right. Okay. And, and so at the end of the day, you know, when, when the markets do melt down, when gold does explode in price, you're going to be spending, you know, exorbitant amounts of money to buy gold if you can even get it because not many people are going to probably want to sell it in silver or the premiums will be explosive, and on the other end of it, what's going to happen is your money that you would have used today to buy it would have maybe dropped by 50 or 60 or 70 percent, so you're using less money now because of the stock crash to buy the, buy the precious metals, so you're basically, you, you, you timed it terribly. So, you, you know, you, if people, you know, they, they, they thought everything's fine because the markets rallied up here into uh, March 3rd, everyone's like, oh, it's all fine, everything's great, you know, the markets are going to rebound. That was a low in, in December slash February and March as the markets are rallying. It's all good. No, it's not. It's game over. Bo, thank you for being on.